In this tutorial, we're going to introduce you to one of the specialist layout tools for rotary applications where we're going to show you how to use the fluting layout gadget to create the fluted column that you can see here. So let's go to File, Close. So let's go and create a new file. So for the job type, I'm going to put that in a rotary job and we need to specify our job size. So the length of my cylinder is going to be 12 inches and the diameter is going to be 3 inches. Let me move over to the Z0 position. We have the option of setting that on the cylinder surface or we could set that from the cylinder axis. Now the cylinder axis is your best bet as it's very difficult to set your Z0 off the cylinder surface as this requires you to have a perfect circle. So we'll go with the cylinder axis in our case. XY datum position, mine's set up for the lower left hand corner and then we need to specify our cylinder orientation and this will depend on your machine setup. If you have a linear X axis and are wrapping the Y values you'd use the along X option. If you had a linear Y axis then you'd use along Y. My example, mine's set up where the X is linear so we're going to have along X axis here. And then we can simply go ahead and press OK. So we're going to look at how we can use a gadget that allows us to set up a particular type of layout of vectors where we can machine flutes along a column. So pro users and aspire users you can access the gadgets by going to the gadgets option up here and to go to wrapping and you can see we have three gadgets that are appropriate for rotary machining. So here we're going to look at the fluting layout. So this is going to open up a dialog box uh, explains a little bit about the fluting layout tool and then we can specify uh, various parameters in here and how we would like our fluted part to look. Well, we can specify the number of flutes. In this case I'm going to go six flutes in there. We can specify an offset from the start and also from the end. So the imagery that we can see here is pretty self-explanatory so it's just applying um, an offset or a gap uh, from the start and the end. So in this case I am going to leave that one inch on the start, one inch from the end and I could look at applying coves if we wanted to at the start and ends of each of our flutes. Here I'm going to do a cove at the start and I'm going to do a cove at the end. Bottom area here, this is just reminding us of our cylinder dimensions and you can simply go ahead and press OK. So there the gadget has created a set of vectors that you can see here and this really is a layout tool to help me position these vectors accurately. Now I could do this manually if I knew exactly how to create and work out all of the values but this really is a quicker way for me to do this. And when we do that the software will automatically create some extra layers for us. So we've got the fluting vectors, uh, so that's these vectors here on a layer called fluting vectors and then we've got the cove vectors which is this one here and this one here and that's the software has put that on a separate layer called cove vectors there. So now I have my vectors ready we can simply go ahead and run some toolpaths. So let's switch over to the toolpaths form. So let's go over to the material setup just to check over uh, our setup that we've got here. So we're working with a 3 inch diameter cylinder, XY position is in the lower left hand corner, our Z0 is at the centre of our cylinder. So this is just um, everything that we set in the job setup form uh, when we started our job and this is just to basically refresh us to remind us of those settings. Model position in the material doesn't matter at the moment as we are not working with 3D entities. Rapid Z gaps above the material, uh, they seem safe and appropriate for our clearance and plunge. And then we've got our home start position with a Z gap above the material of 1.8. So that's enough uh, clearance in there. So I'm happy with that, so we could go ahead and press OK. So let's select those vectors and then we're going to go into the profile toolpath form. So here we're going to specify a start depth. 
the start depth is going to be at zero in our case. Cut depth, I'd like to cut down 0.2 of an inch and I'd like to use a half inch ball nose. So using the select option will open up my tool database and here I can select the half inch ball nose from my tool list there. Check over the settings ensuring that they're safe and appropriate for what I'm doing. Then I could go ahead and press OK. I need to specify how we machine the vectors on the outside, the inside or on those vectors. I'd like to machine on the vectors that we've got set up here and then we could simply work our way down and simply give that a name, we'll just call that one Profile Flutes and then simply go ahead and press Calculate. So here I can see my wrapped toolpath being wrapped around my cylinder. So let's go and preview that toolpath. So we'll press the preview option. You may have noticed uh, in that split second that the software was calculating that preview uh, that the software actually unwrapped our part. Uh, now even though we are previewing this in a wrapped environment now that the software has calculated that preview, the software still thinks of this as an a flat three axis environment. It's calculating the toolpaths like this. Once it's finished calculating the toolpaths and ready to show us the preview, it switches to our wrapped view to show us what our part would look like if we was to cut that on our machine. And so it's very important to note that um, it's the actual post processor that is going to exchange the Y values for the rotary axis movements. Right then, so I'm happy with that preview and if I just rotate this around um, you can see what our part looks like. And so at this stage uh, if I wanted to go ahead and cut that out I could simply close out of the preview form here and then we'd use the save toolpaths option. So I can see my profile flutes is listed in the toolpaths to be saved section and so what we need to do now is select a post processor. So your post processor has to support rotary moves as this is the stage where the software is going to take the three axis calculated toolpaths and then convert them into rotary. Now the post processor has to support rotary and needs to be set up so it's configured correctly for what your rotary axis is. For example, I'm using a Mac 3 control program and here you can see that I have Mac 2.3 wrap Y to A and if I move up I've got wrap X to A. Now in our case I'm wrapping the Y values uh, so I'm going to use the wrap Y to A and A is basically the typical designated G code for a rotary move. So I'm going to use the wrap Y to A option and then I could simply go ahead and press save toolpath, give that toolpath a name and then hit save and then I could take that over to my machine. So let's just close out, that's pretty much the toolpath saving uh, sorted. I just want to go back over to our 2D view. And I just wanted to point out that you're not restricted to only using the gadgets to create your vectors for rotary machining. You can create your own vector geometry and toolpaths using the available tools in the software. So that really completes this tutorial. So let's go ahead and save this file. So go to File, Save As, and then in the Project folder, we're going to call this one Created a Fluted Column, and you can access that from the Project folder.